let's start because the time is short. Uh, I hope it will feel short as well for you. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Jan Loda. I'm from IBM. And although IBM is a technology company, this, and I would call it workshop, uh, will not be technological at all, although it will introduce you to something that is called design thinking or design approach uh, that you will use to build any solutions. It can be IT solutions. It can be a garden shed that you are doing, whatever. So all we know for today that we slipped a little bit the half past four, but we will try uh, to be done by uh, 6 PM. H how did this slide get in? Uh, well, surely it's the slide I have put in because if I now would deliver you a presentation about uh, this steak, how beautiful it is, his taste, how nice it is, and how chewy, it will get boring after a few minutes. And without really experiencing it, you don't get the grasp of how the steak tastes. And the same is with the design thinking. You know, if I deliver you a presentation about design thinking, it would seem everything obvious. It's basically a straightforward. It's not a rocket science. On the other hand, uh, it's maybe a little bit hard when you try to practice it. And in order to get a grasp of design approach, you have to experience it. So I decided that uh, I will do it in a form of a workshop, which will be probably a little bit of a challenge when I found out how many of you there is. Nevertheless, we will still try to do it, and we will do it as an experiment, and we will see if it works out or not. In order to do a workshop in this amount of people in this unworkshopy space, uh, there are basically the two rules that we will need. The first one is that I want you to actively participate. It's a workshop. There is a work in the word workshop. So I expect you to, uh, to actively participate. I will not sell you anything, so forget the shop part. And the second point that's important is try to respect the rules and follow the process. Regarding the process we will follow in the workshop, it will be the one that was designed basically by a design school in Stanford. And Stanford is basically a top class design school in the world. And they designed this workshop to be able to run it they say 100 plus. It's definitely you, 100 plus. So we'll see how it works. Regarding the active participation, there is one more thing. You will work in pairs. So try, uh, try to find yourself a partner. And it's important that this partner doesn't leave before the end, because otherwise, if you leave, or if you do not participate, you are ruining it for the, for the, for the second, second uh, company in the pair. So let's slowly dive in. Institute of Design and Stanford is the author of the workshop that we will take. You will all need papers and pen. That's all you will need. Uh, if someone is lacking paper, there are still some papers uh, up in front on the desk, so you can take as you wish. Uh, and what will we basically go through is a design process. Uh, process itself is a design. It has some steps you can follow. And the goal of today is to go through whole process. Not to do it perfectly in each step, but for you to experience the whole process of design. How it will feel? It will be fast paced. It will be mayhem. It will be like you know buzzing bees in the beehive. So it will be very, uh, 
very sort of uh, lively. I will stop you at different times so that we can move to another phase. I know that I will probably interrupt you in something and you will probably not be uh, quite uh, happy with the outcome, but please do respect it. We have to co go through every stage, so we will need uh, to finish on time. So trust me, trust Stanford, and uh, just dive in it and enjoy it. Everyone has a pen and pencil. And we will start with a simple challenge. The challenge is to design ideal wallet. Everybody knows what, what the wallet is. The thing you carry stuff around. So what we will do is come up with some ideas how an ideal wallet should look like. Do a sketch with functions and features of the wallet and try to do it on your own, everybody. And we will take just three minutes for a fast sketch. So try to do the best. Come on at it and do the design or the sketch of the wallet. And the time is running right now. So we are halfway through. Try to get the best wallet on your sketch. Newcomers, you will all need papers and pen. That's all you need today. So if you don't have one, there are still some papers up front. So you can take one. Or maybe take six of them at least. So, the time is up. So stop drawing your sketches. What you have experienced right now was a classical problem solving when you have a problem, which in this case was to draw a wallet. You take the data you know. You were uh, thinking about how, to, how you can maybe from the data and information you have from your own experience, how you can improve it or how you can make it better. 
and you sketched your wallet. In design approach, which we will practice today, it is not about the wallet that is a problem. The design approach is an approach which is human-centric, which comes from the needs of the user. So you are not having a wallet as a problem, but the problem is that it is bulky. The problem is that you lose it often. The problem is that uh, it's not big enough for all the things you carry and all other needs that they are. So basically, we are reframing the challenge. And it's not you design a wallet, but you design something useful for your partner. And this is what we will be doing for the rest of an hour, which means you will be working in pairs. So find yourself a partner in a pair. Let's take nine seconds to put yourself in pairs. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and I guess ready. So, what we'll be doing now in pairs is trying to design something useful and meaningful for your partner. And it will be still in the realm of carrying things, carrying the things of everyday use, the things you usually carry around. And in design, what you work with is the empathy. And you work with the user. And how can you get information from the user? Ask, exactly. So what you will be doing next is an interview. You will do interview in your past, and during this interview you will try to find out as much information as you can from your partner about how he carries the, the things that, he, uh, that are of daily use, how he uses his wallet, maybe ask him to uh, give him a walkthrough uh, through his wallet, when he uses it, when he doesn't take it, why? When was the last thing that something unpleasant happened with his wallet? How was it done? How was it solved? So these open questions you will ask in the pair, try to find out the empathy and the understanding of your partner regarding carrying the stuff of daily use. We will take four minutes for each of the interview. So we will start uh, the first four minutes. One of you in the pair will be A, the second one will be B, and you will switch after four minutes. So let's start interviewing, and please take notes. it. And you have just four minutes.
okay? So try to make most Try to make most out of the four minutes to get as much information as you can in this understanding phase because with this data you will work later on. Now we will switch sides and the other partner will ask, uh, ask the other one about the same stuff, how he carries things, what's working, what's not working, if there are any problems and so on. So during the interviews, you got some information about the user, 
When you are conducting these interviews, you should go for open questions. You should always try to find out how it went in the past. Uh, rather than uh, asking about if someone would like this and that and trying to push him any solution. Because in this understanding part, we are trying to see how the user actually acts, what is he doing, what are his problems. And during these interviews, you got some information regarding how he carries, th carries different things, uh, how he uses the wallet, when, and so on. Now, we will try to do the second round, and you will try to dig deeper. Now, forget about the wallet. Try to focus about the on the stuff that is important to the user, and try to go for stories, for emotions. So if you make your partner cry during it, you are onto something good. Now, joking aside, emotions are very important for design. So try to see if you can get more information about the stuff that is important to the user. Since you have a head start with the first interview, this we will take only three minutes each. So we will start again that A interviews B and tries to find more important stuff about the user. So now we will switch sides and again try to go for the things that are sort of surprising for you that you didn't, uh, didn't know about the partner. 
in the pair and try to dig deeper on those and try to find what, why it is important, what's behind it, and so on. So let's start and switch roles. Time is always short. Let's move on, and now we try to capture the findings that you have uh, that you have heard from your partner. So try to capture just list, make a list of the goals and wishes that you heard from the partner, and any insights, any learning that was sort of surprising. Uh, it can be a learning that you know a partner when. He's paying cash. Uh, it feels more value for him than if he, when he's paying by cart or something like this. Anything that sort of strikes you may be weird or that was something that you sort of got onto. So let's take just three minutes to make the list of the goals and wishes everybody for himself. Everybody for himself. So take down the goals and wishes, take down the insights. Usually the goals and wishes are the verbs that you have heard. Insights are more about the important stuff, about the emotions.
The different phases in design are usually the converge and diverge phases. In the first part, we diverge to get much, as much information as we could. And now we are converging and trying to put down the important stuff. seems that you are all done. So we can move to the next phase where we will try to take a point of view, which means basically it's your point of view of the partner's problem and why it is a problem. Basically, it's a one sentence saying that who, which is the partner that you interviewed, needs what and because in order to do something, because of something. So try to put one sentence that describes the problem and the impact of the, uh, it has on your partner. And this sentence will be basically a playground for the brainstorming later on. So try to do it as a one sentence. It should have all the three S's, which is it should be short, specific, and sexy. It is just one iteration, so it's not something that will be chiseled in stone. So if you don't get it quite right, it doesn't matter. It is just try to summarize in one sentence what's the pain point of the partner he needs to solve and what's the impact it has, why. Which is who needs, to, needs what in order to do something or because of something. And this basically should come out of the interviews where you dig deeper, where you got the important stuff, the stuff that is important to your user. Now, once we have this point of view, We will move to the fun part, because every one of you can draw, even though some of you don't think they can. We will try to sketch a new ways how to solve the problem that you defined in your point of view. So forget or leave your alphanumeric world and become a child again. Everything is possible. Try to, f uh, to come up also with the, with the crazy ideas. And here we go for the quantity. We want to have as many ideas as you can that are solving 
the statement that you have crafted before. So we will take five minutes and see how many ideas you can come up with. So everybody for himself, based on his point of view, try to sketch at least five solutions. Be visual, do the sketches with some explanation marks. Do as many as you can. Really don't for forget about your left logical part of the brain. Everything is possible. This is again the part where we diverge, where we try to get as many ideas so we go for the quantity. We are not going for the quality. We do not, uh, uh, we do not evaluate the solutions. Don't limit yourself with the five. If you, you can do more, you can do more. I guess the record was something about over 30, so. The better you did the interviews, as you see now, the easier for you is to come up with the solutions. The drawings doesn't have to be perfect. You are not drawing Mona Lisa. It's just a rough sketch. And again, we go for quantity. 
not the quality of the sketch. Okay. Hands up those that have more than five. More than 10. Okay. So uh, now it's time that you will share the ideas of the solution with your partner. So now it's time to, from the diverge part, to converge again, to get what resonates with the partner. When you are sharing your solution, you are not a salesman, you are not trying to defend the solution. You rather explain it and you need to let your partner talk in order to see what works, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Let him even build some some ideas on top of your ideas. So let's have two slots by five minutes where you will present to your partner your solutions and most important, get the feedback from him.
Okay, so we are ready to switch sides. Okay, most of you seems to be done sharing. So, does everyone need more time? Okay, so now what we will do is you get the information on your ideas. You will get some few crazy ideas, maybe some good ideas, maybe some mediocre ideas. And now it's time uh, that you take the feedback that you got from your partner and you will generate one solution. So out of the many ideas you had, you will try to craft one solution that will solve the user's need. So let's take three minutes to draft the solution for carrying things of personal daily use. Consider everything you have learned from the feedback you got. And try to do your best to come up with a 
I wouldn't like to call it final idea, but final idea in inverted commas. Okay, so what you have done is basically the first prototype. What would, what would be the next step? What would you do with, the next, with, the, with your prototype? You can either go and show it and get feedback, get more learning, or you can do uh, a physical prototype. You can, uh, you can physically prototype it. Or what you can do is that you will just fire up a web page with your idea of, uh, of a wallet, and you can sort of see what will be the, uh, the feedback of the market. So anything of these are just a testing of a prototype. And that's basically the end of the exercise. And the question is, why did we exercise the design? Because it's quite 
messy, as, as you heard? Well, the answer is we exercise to improve. Uh, there is this uh, design management institute, which over a few years, every few years, they put, uh, uh, put a chart showing how the companies that are leveraging and implementing design practices and design approaches in their solution, how they outperform the uh, general S&P market. What we have done so far is that we went through the process. We went through the empathize part. That was when we did the interviews. We did the define. That was the point of view. We did the ideate part. We did the prototype. And then you are ready to test it. But in real practice, it's not a straightforward process. Basically, it's a loop where you can go in the loop and try to improve it. So basically, the mindset is that you treat everything as a prototype. What uh, IBM ha has in its uh, methodology of design thinking is the loop in a much more sort of uh, easier view, where we have the observe, reflect, and make part. The observe part is the when we, when we try to understand the user, reflect is the converge, uh, where we get the information together, try to find out the important stuff, and make is making ideas, making the prototypes to be tested. And you go in the loop, so once you make a prototype, you test it, you reflect on the test. Once you have this reflection, you can go and get more information from the users, and so on and so on. So basically, observing immerses us in the world of the users. The reflecting part puts all the different views into one and tries to pinpoint the important part. And the making give a specific concrete form that you can test with the users. And this is the, this is the methodology or approach that you can use at all the different products. In case you would only do the observation and reflection, and you will not have the other part of the loop, it means that you observe, you learn something from the users, and you say, hmm, yeah, but I still need to know much more things. And you go and do interview again. And more interviews you do, more, uh, more interesting stuff you will find. And then it will sort of give you a notion that you, you should get more information about this interesting stuff. And you do another interviews. And this is, called sort of, uh, this is called analysis paralysis. It sometimes happens. Uh, uh, one of the design companies get, uh, got, caught to, uh, got caught into this as well. Uh, they basically got three months uh, to deliver a, pro a project, which was basically a web page. It's a web design company. And they ended up in analysis paralysis because they found out that uh, or they had the feeling that they don't have enough information. So they did the interviews again and again, and suddenly they found out that basically they have just a few days to deliver it, and the product wasn't perfect. On the other hand, if you just uh, make, reflect, and you don't take in the users and users' needs, you are just so-called flying blind, which means, well, you are basically doing the product like a shot in the dark. Uh, based only on, on your knowledge, on what you think is the best. And it can happen that after three months of development, you will go out with this great product that you managed to, to put on, and nobody wants it. Or you can be like a sort of squirrel in the, uh, in the round, where you observe, and whatever you heard from the customers, you reflect, no, no, you don't reflect, you put immediately into the production, so you are sort of only taking orders. You are not concentrating in a reflect part on the important stuff, which means uh, 
the customer says they want the button on, uh, on the other side, you do it, then they say no, they want it here, they want different color, they want this, they want this functionality, and you are still sort of just taking orders and you are not reflecting, so you are not sort of improving your product in, uh, in reality. So that's why there is the loop. Uh, IBM added a few things on top of this, uh, of this methodology. It's first of all is are the principles. The first principle is focus on users' outcome, then leverage the diverse teams, and of course go and use the loop. Apart from the principles, there are the things that are important for alignment during this process. Because imagine that you are not doing it in pairs, but you are doing it as a big development team with designers as well with the marketers, with the users, and you need to have the alignment. And the key different keys are the hills, playbacks, and the sponsor users, and we'll get to it in a minute. If you look at the, uh, at the uh, focus on the user outcome, we are basically designing for the outcome. We are not designing this or for this. It's nice, but it's just a product, functions, and features. We are designing for this. We are designing for the experience of the user. That is what means design for an outcome. The second one, the diverse teams. Basically, in reality, it looks something like this. Uh, in the design process, uh, you work with users, you work with the marketers, you work with developers, and you have, uh, you have all these different teams uh, working together. And the loop basically means that you iterate, iterate, and iterate. You treat everything as a prototype. And if you want to treat everything as prototype, then you have to sort of realize that building a real thing is time consuming and it takes a long time before you can launch it. So that's why we are doing a lot of prototypes along the way, which is like building a facade, basically. You are building something that seems like real just to test it with the users, to test it with the customers if it works, if it, if it delivers the desired outcomes or not. You can imagine if you are looking at any Western mu mu movie, it seems like you are in a real general store, but if you go just a few steps aside, you see that it's a, just a facade. It's a fake just to see what would be uh, the feeling of the, uh, of the real thing, how it would look like. So these are the key principles that, that sort of we leverage. Regarding the alignment, uh, the alignment has, has basically uh, three parts. First of all is alignment about the goal. Since you don't have only developers in the team, but you have also other people, you have to make sure that you are aligning them with the, with the goal, with the North Star that basically you are, you are going to. What, uh, what is used is something that is called hills. It is, uh, uh, the name comes basically from the, uh, from the war perspective, where the hill itself is something to be tackled. So basically the general in the war uh, give the platoon order to take the hill, but he didn't tell, him, tell them how to do it. And it was about, about the team to find out the, the right way. So, uh, the hill is uh, similar to the thing that you see uh, that you were doing in a po point of view, but this is not about the need, but this is about uh, the solution, how the solution should work with the user, which means who is the user, what is what action he can do, and then the third W is the wow. And the wow is there because it should be uh, something that, that sort of sprinkles emotion, something that's enjoyable and something that will basically uh, 
make the people love, uh, love your product. And this, this is basically true, you know, if I use my mobile phone mainly for texting and mainly for talking, then buying an Apple doesn't make sense. But people nevertheless, even they use it for 90% of, uh, of this time in this manner in the offices, they buy the Apple because it's about emotion, it's about the brand. The second alignment is uh, done via the playbacks. And playbacks are a gathering where you get all the involved parties and you are presenting basically the status of the project, the new findings, uh, what was done, and what are, uh, what are the next steps. And these playbacks are basically aligning you not about the goal, but they are aligning the team in time. Because you can't expect all the team to be present at all the activities throughout the time. So these are what's called playbacks, which is really gathering where you have also the, uh, sometimes you have the customer there, sometimes you have the sponsor users, uh, and you have all the enlarged team present. And the last one are the sponsor users, which is basically alignment with the reality. During the process, as it is iterative and you are moving in the loop, you should talk to the customers, talk to the users, and find out if basically you are on the right track. Otherwise, you will be just making product which will be flying blind. And the worst case is that you assume if you have any assumptions, you have to go and validate with your users. Go out of your comfort zone and ask them. Because, as it is said, if you just assume, you make ass of you and me. And uh, why design works, maybe a last, uh, uh, a last short story. You know what this is? Yeah, the, the, the CT scanner, CAT scanner. Uh, usually, if, 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 you are, if you are going into this in the hospital, uh, it, it, it is possible that it's quite serious with you. And uh, what happened that there was this guy uh, who invented it, and he was quite happy because it can save lives, it can, uh, it can really, uh, really help, and he, he, he was sort of proud of himself. And then he uh, went to the hospital uh, and see how it works in order to get a feeling. And basically he saw, uh, he saw how children behave when they are trying to put them into the CAT scanner. Usually the child is after several uh, uh, doctor visits, uh, they are told not to move in the CAT scanner uh, so, so that it works, uh, works well. Uh, it makes these, these terrible sounds. It's very unpleasant and, you know, most of the children were sort of crying. <coughs> so he decided to try to find out how to make it better. And out of these several iterations with the children as well, they basically started to do a differentiated product, which is basically a CAT scanner as well. It works well, and the best part is that actually the children, when we're leaving this, they were sort of looking forward to go to the CAT scanner again. Because for them, suddenly, even though it made a similar sound, it, it was the same product, it was totally different feeling. So this is one of the things where sort of design can help. And it was not only about the design from the perspective of an art. It's a design about how it functions with the user. And that's basically uh, the last story I have. 
And maybe I will finish up with a quote that good design is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's probably not that good. So uh, that's all from my side regarding design principles and how we uh, leverage design. Uh, you know, there are several, several stories, even if you, even in, in IBM, to, to sort of not only talk about uh, other, uh, other usage, IBM is a partner of Wimbledon for many years. And a few years back, they said, hey, it's great, we will do the best app for the uh, reporters, for the people who are commenting the tennis players, uh, the, the matches. And they did this beautiful app with all the functions, and you could see all the statistics, and uh, it was quite a big investment. The only problem was that the reporters didn't use it. And that's why we sort of implemented the design in the approach. And we came back to Wimbledon saying, OK, so let's do it, in a, uh, uh, let's do it refresh in a different way. And we pulled in the reporters. And the reporters were sort of part of the team that was doing the app. And the app is now widely used in Wimbledon. So again, it's back to gaining the empathy and working with the users. So whenever you are trying to build something or do something, uh, don't hesitate to go out and ask. Even if it is not recommended to ask your colleagues and family, it's good to ask them first. Usually they are the ones that will say that it's a good idea because they don't want to hurt you. Uh, but if you want to get a real feedback, go out in the street and, and ask the real users. So that's all from, from my, my side. And enjoy the rest of the day. And thank you for your attention.